Hey y'all, this is April Bird coming with your daily live. Happy, happy Wednesday to each of you. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. His mercy endured forever and ever to all generations. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to each of you. Today, we're going to listen to a song. I'm so excited about, thank you all in Midday for uh, recommending uh, the music, the songs, the worship songs. It is very, uh, it is. It is very enlightening to all of us, and we have when well, we can usher into the spirit of God and the presence of God before worship, before the word of God. Amen. Good morning, Antoinette. Good morning, beloved. Um, the song we're going to listen to today is by Hezekiah Walker, and it's fitting for our topic. Um, I need you to survive because we all need one another. Good morning, beloved. We all need one another, whether we think it or whether we know it. We need one another to survive and God have us all on this earth, inhabitants in this earth to get along and to show love to one another. And I pray for the day that we would get back to the community and we would get back to the love and we would think about it before we pull out a gun and hurt somebody before we open our mouth and and tear somebody down i pray that the day the day the day and the time will come back where we begin to value one another and value one another's lives good morning val good morning love, beloved that we value one another's lives. We wouldn't want to take somebody's son. We wouldn't want to take somebody's daughter. And we want everybody to get home safe because we need to get home safe to our family. So that's been on my spirit. And I pray that you all would uh, be blessed by this song and you will let it resonate in your spirit. It's I Need You to Survive. It's by Hezekiah Walker. I do not own the rights to this music. Amen. I pray that you listen to the words and that it'll just prepare us for the word of God. Amen. I, I like this song is an older song. It was very popular when it first came out. Me, I need you. You need me. We're all, we're all a part of God's body. We forgot about that. All a part of God's body. Stand with me. Agree with me. We're all a part of God's body. It is his will. It's his will that every, every need be supplied. You are important to me. I hope I'm important to you because you are important to me. And even if I'm not, you are still important to me. I need you to survive. We need one another. You are important to me. I need you to survive. We can't do it alone. If we could do it alone, he would have just created one person. I need you. You need me. When somebody say, I'm just doing my own, I'm just minding my own business. I don't deal with people. I don't care about people. But you need somebody and they need you. God has just what you need through another person and vice versa. Agree with me. We're all a part of God's body. What happened that we got away from the fact that we were all a part of God's body? It is his will that every need be supplied. I don't know what happened. You are important to me. I need you to survive and you need me to survive. I pray that today that you will get that in your spirit. You are important to me. Yes. I need you to survive. Yes. 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 God, we need one another. I need you. You need me. Whether you know it or not, you don't know who you need. We're all a part of God's body. We're all on one accord. I pray that today we will get back to that place that we will value a person, a, a person that God created. He's the creator and he should be the only one that should be able to take a life or to discipline someone. It is his will 
that everybody get what they need, that every everybody needs be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to survive. I pray that, to, that today you tell somebody that you need them and tell somebody that they are important to you, that you need them to survive. You know, I don't need you. I don't need you. You need me. It's time to get away from that. We all need one another. I pray for you. You pray for me. I love you. I need you to survive. I don't know if I can do that like my grandson. He put it that heart. I don't know if I'm doing it right. I think it's that heart. I can't do it right. But he always does a really good Grammy. And he'll tell me love me. And I just, I just, I just love it. When he does that out of nowhere, he'll just come up to me, Grammy. And he know how to say I love you, but he'll just do that. Grammy, you so pretty, Grammy. Grammy, you are so pretty. I'll say, Lord, just thank you. The baby told me I was pretty today. My, I couldn't hear from somebody else, but he was able to tell me that. So I just thank God. We all need one another. I don't care who God will use anybody. He will use different pe people. We need each other to survive. I pray for you. And you pray for me. I pray for you. I call you all by name. The ones that are live with me, I call you by name. I pray for you. I pray for you. I call you the beloved squad. I pray for you. I pray that you're praying for me. And I pray that you can get a prayer up. We pray for one another. I love you. I need you to survive. I pray for you. You pray for me. I love you. I need you to survive. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to survive. I pray that we will get that in our spirit. You pray for somebody. We won't let our words from our mouth. Good morning, Minyata. We won't let the words from our mouth harm somebody. We'll love somebody. We'll love them through their pain. We'll love them right where they are. Because you got to meet somebody where they are in order for them to respect you. Like I say, you got to catch the fish before you start to try to clean the fish. You go and start judging people and start mis mistreating people. People can't hear anything you're saying because you're hurting their feelings. Prayer is powerful. I might cannot say something to you, but I can pray for you. Yes, we need one another. Yes, Val, we need each other. I love all of my family. I love all my friends and enemy. I love everybody. And I don't know anybody that I hate. I just don't. And I thank God that he has given me that spirit. I don't know anybody that I hate. If they don't like me, that's their problem. They don't have nothing to do with me. But I love you. I need you to survive. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to survive. And you need me to survive. Somebody need me and somebody need you. You pray for me. I love you. I need you to survive. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. Because words, they said, sticks and stone may break my bone, but words don't hurt. Yes, they do. Words do hurt. Good morning, Miss Bussy. Word does, word does hurt. People can say something to you long time ago, and today they're still in the back of your mind. Words do hurt. Don't let the enemy tell you words don't hurt. Yes, they do. Especially if somebody that you value their opinion, and you shoot them down and tear them down and call them all kind of names and mistreat them. It does hurt. I need you to survive. You need me to survive. Might be, might not be in the capacity that you think, but we all need one another, beloved. I love you too, Minyata. God bless you. We need each other. We need each other. I don't care what people say. We need each other. You know, I don't need nobody. I, that's why I'm, no, we need each other. Everybody can need, need somebody because if you get down or you have a need, you want to have somebody in your corner. You want to have somebody that love you and care about you and, and value you as a person. You don't want to be somewhere left in this big old world by yourself thinking you don't need nobody. Oh, oh, contrary, you do. We need each other to survive. Amen. I pray that you got in your spirit. Thank you for saying that, Minyata. God bless you. That matters to people. That matters to me. 
That matters when people say I love you, when people value you as a person. When people tear you down, that 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 tears your your self-esteem down. That tears, they just mess up your whole day. And you gotta go to God and get repaired. But what you say to people does matter. And you tell somebody hi and smile at somebody. It makes a difference. Good morning, Mary. Smile makes a difference. Smile. You smile at somebody. It makes a difference. Just frowning all up and being mean to people. People have their own problems. They don't want, they don't need you to bring them down even worse. Amen. It makes a difference. Somebody told me that when I call their name on live, that it makes a difference. That when I, when I call them personally and know that they are there, it makes a difference. Wow. You just don't know what somebody needs. Good morning, Mary. You just don't know what somebody needs. And I don't want to be that person to not care about somebody or not to be the person that God passed, put me in somebody's path and I mistreated them. And I'm sure I've done that. I'm sure I've had made some mistakes, but I want to get better. I want to do better by God's people. Amen. We're going to open up in prayer and I won't be before you long. Um, it's going to be short, quick to the point. Heavenly Father, we honor you today. We magnify you. We lift up your holy and righteous name. We adore you for you are such an amazing, amazing God. Thank you, God, for first loving us. We wouldn't know how to love except we know you and know how you love us. So, Father God, I thank you for loving us. Thank you for showing your faithfulness, being so faithful to your children and just your mercy and your grace, your long suffering, and your kindness towards your people, God. Thank you. You are a role model. We love you back because you first loved us. Lord, we ask that you forgive us of our sins, anything that we said, done, or thought that was not pleasing to you, God. We ask that you create us a clean heart, renewing us a right spirit, that you will forgive us of our sins, and that you will cleanse us with hyssop, that you will make us a new God, and that you will give us a heart like you, God. Remove that stony heart and give us a heart of flesh, like it says in the book of Jeremiah. Remove that stony heart and give us a heart of flesh where we can feel again, that we can love again, and that we can be nice again, and we can be kind again, and we can change bitter to better. And that we can smile and treat our brother and sister and our children, our spouses, whatever, our significant other, whoever that we come in contact, our contact with. I pray that we will give them love, God, and help us to, to love ourselves because we can't love our neighbors if we don't love ourselves. So we thank you for that, God. And we ask that you have your way today. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Anoint me afresh. Be glorified in all that I do and say. Edify your body of people. And help us to remind each, be mindful that we need one another. We won't harm them with words from my mouth. We love them. We need each other to survive. Put that in our spirit, God. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen. Good morning, Bruce. Good morning, beloved. Yes, yes, Antoinette. Show love to all. Show me you love me. Yes. You know, if you show somebody, love is an action word. Good morning, Bruce. Love is an action word. You say, I love you, but you're, you're mistreating me. And I was, uh, I met a, a lady this morning early in the store and she was going through something and I was able to take some time and talk to her. And I just, you know, just excited about how I felt when I left that store that I thought that I was supposed to go somewhere else. I didn't want to be running late to get home from the gym and get a shower. I didn't want to be running late, but I took that time out and God, Allow me to be a blessing to her and she was a blessing to me. And just, you don't know who needs to hear and how God will have you waiting. You think it's for one thing, but God have you waiting so you can minister, minister to someone or to show love to someone. So we got to slow down because we don't know who needs to hear an encouraging word from us. And then I come down the street. I see this kids. They look like they skipping school. And little boy and a girl, and I'm looking, I'm like, he just kicking her in the bottom. She walking in front of him, and he just kicking her in the bottom. Just walking behind her, kicking her. And I'm like, nobody's coming, so I'm letting my window down. I'm like, hey, excuse me, excuse me. Don't do that. Don't do that. You can't do that. Why would you be kicking her? That's not nice. I say, she's a queen. And I say, young lady, don't ever let a man kick you. Don't let a man hit you. And I'm like, Lord, I hope you don't curse me out. But I'm thankful that he listened. But he was just walking behind her, kicking her in her back end. And I'm like, why would you kick her? I was just playing with her. I said, but you can't, don't kick her. Because I'm sure it hurt because he was kicking her pretty hard. 
And so I'm like, where y'all going? Are y'all leaving school? Y'all on vacation? I said, you know, that's how babies made. Where y'all going? And I'm all in their business. But I was like, you know what? Whatever. Maybe, you know, whatever. That's somebody's kids. And so I got in their business this morning. I came on home and did what I need to do. But I let her know that she was a queen. I let him know that he was a king. And kings don't act like that. Queens don't get kicked in the butt. They don't let a man hit them. And women don't hit men. And so we were... I said, let me get on home while I'm over here and all these people beating it. But I did it. I said it. I meant what I said. And it just, I, w I thought I wasn't going to share that this morning. But I wanted to share that. Like, this young lady, they had to be no more than about 14, maybe 16, because they're in high school, the high school. So they probably 16, 16, 17. And he just walking behind her, kicking her. And she just, just turned around, stop, stop. And I'm at a stop sign. I'm like, that, that's not acceptable. But I'm glad he didn't shoot me or nothing. <laughs> Good morning, Tina. Good morning, beloved. But we got to, we are a village, the community. We got to be prayerful and mindful as we take our community back. Our children are doing things that maybe they've seen their parents do. I don't know. But that's not acceptable at all. Never acceptable. So, um, yeah, praise God. They need, God had me and everybody in folks' business this morning. But I came in love. I was, I came in love. And you just never know where you're going to be and what impact you can have on somebody. Because he might grow up realizing that, you know, that's wrong. Some, I, I wasn't supposed to do that. And so, and she know that, you know, somebody hit me, that's a problem. Because he wasn't just hitting, he was just kicking her, walking behind her, kicking her. And I just thought that was too much. But anyway... We digress, but I, I pray that I made an impact there, and I pray for them on my way home. I was close by the house anyway. But uh, we're going to uh, open up the book up, your uh, Bibles, your phone, your tablets, iPads, whatever manner of Bible that you use. And we're going to come out of Galatians chapter 6, verse 1 through 5. And it's and it reads, the title is Bear One Another's Burdens. And uh, it reads, brethren, if a man is overtaken in a trespass, in a sin, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Verse number two, it says, bear one another's burdens and so to fulfill the law of Christ. Verse number three, it says, for if anyone thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Verse number four says, but let each one examine his own work and then he will have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. Verse number five, the last verse, for each one shall bear their own, his own load. And I read in your hearing uh, Galatians chapter six, verses one through five. And I'm going to be prayerful as I tag my title. I pray that God will add a blessing to the hearing and most of all to the uh, doing uh, doing of his word. Uh, we don't want to just be hearers also. We want to be doers. And um, I'm going to be prayerful as I tag my title. Restoring in love. Restoring in love. Here we have Apostle Paul in the book of Galatians. Paul is talking to the Church of Galatia. And Paul is letting them know those who are spiritual, those who are more mature in the faith, those who probably have been with God a long time and those who have had experiences in the past, those who have learned from their experiences, their mistakes. Because remember, we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But so those who are spiritual, he's letting them know that you're going to run it. He's letting all of us know you're going to run into some people. That have been overtaken in sin, that are that are that are in sin and they're struggling, they don't know how to get out. You're gonna run into some people that have been overtaken in sin. And he's and Paul is talking, Apostle Paul is talking to the church of Galatia, and he's letting them know that ye who are spiritual, you who are spiritual, he's telling you how to care for those who have fallen into sin, how to speak to those who have fallen into sin. But he's mindful to say you who are spiritual, not you that have been in church chronologically a long time, not you that have just been in the church and you know a little something, but you're talking about it, but you're not being about it. You don't practice what you preach. He said, ye who are spiritual, 
That means you are communing with God. That means you know the word. That means you're walking in love. That means you're walking in kindness. You're walking in long suffering. You're walking in gentleness and meekness. You're walking in like Galatia chapter 5, 22 to 23, the fruits of the spirit. You're walking in the fruits of the spirit. So, cause if you're, you're just because you, 95 or 85, 75, 65, just because you have chronological age does not make you and I spiritual. Just because you've been in the church for a long time does not make you spiritual. If you have a relationship with God and you're walking in the spirit and you're honoring God and you're walking by the spirit of God, that means you who are spiritual, that means you're going to walk in the spirit of God. I mean, the Holy Spirit is indwelling every believer. That means you allowed the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you and I. And and so you who are spiritual, restore such a one in love. He said, such a one in a spirit of gentleness and considering yourself, lest she also be tempted. And so when somebody's caught in a sin, somebody's overtaken in a sin or somebody's struggling with something, the last thing they need, he or she needs is for us to go to one, a spiritual person or someone from the church or whoever to go to them and start beating them down and start busting. You know, you doing this, you doing that. And I've been guilty of that with my own daughter. So I was convicted in this message because you, you think that they should know better because they been with me. So something should have got on you. You should be doing better by now. You should be here, but that's not for me to decide. Because we all have babes in Christ, we have spiritual children, we have young spiritual young adults, and we have mature parents. It's just like God used it as practical as we grow up in our lives, our physical lives. You somebody could have just been saved, and so they are a babe in Christ. And what does what does babes do? Babes be want some milk. They want a bottle. They crying. Wah, wah. They crying. They want to be picked up. They want to be coddled. They want to be taken care of. That's what babes do. And so that's what. Good morning, all of my day. That's what babes do. And we got to be remind, be mindful of who we dealing with, knowing the person. Being having a relationship with people before we start speaking into their lives because we know, we know, we don't know where they are, but if we know where they are, then we'll know how to approach them. And so we have a, a, a babe. The babe is crying. The babe wants a diaper change. The babe wants a bottle. The babe wants to be birthed and, and held and coddled. That's what babes do. But if somebody is a spiritual child, that means they, they, they're they not a babe anymore. So they're able, good, up, good, good morning, Virginia. They're able to get up and they're able to kind of walk for themselves. They might be stumbling over their babe. And guess what? When children get a certain age or taller, they, they, they don't want nobody to help them. They want to do what they want to do. I got it. I can do it. I, I can do it. But they're very, very, very selfish. Mine, mine, mine. This mine, mine. And no, no. And so as you get to that stage of a, a child, they're very selfish and very self-centered. They're in different stages. You came from a babe and now you're a child. So you, 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 you selfish. You're all about you. And so that's what it is. And then now that person has grown up to a spiritual young adult. And this person has been spending time in the word of God. Um, going to church and uh and call it and they have somebody that's mentoring them and and they're learning the word and they're going and calling and asking questions they're starting to invite people to church they're starting to do all these different things and so now they can kind of be trusted to be on their own and so as you mentor them as you uh spiritually parent them and if you are a, a parent where you actually start to um send them out and start to let, let them go out to evangelize and you giving them information, you're not giving them all the answers. You're actually ask, you're actually actually testing them like, hey, oh, you know, they ask, they used to call you and ask you where every scripture is. You like, hey, hey, I'm, I, I give you all, but I need you to do some research on your own because you're growing up. So it's not it's now you're not on milk anymore. You're not. It's time for you to get on a little meat. It's time for you to start being able to chew and it's time for you to start being able to digest. And so you can have you can be able to now you can start. Get growing up to you be a parent and you can start reproducing after your own kind and so at that so there's different stages and i i felt like i needed to stop and let you all know about those stages in case you didn't know because it depends on where a person is in their life and stay if they're even a believer if they're a believer or not because if they're neither one of those then they're actually dead in christ if they have not accepted jesus christ the lord and savior they are spiritually dead 
And so if they accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, they're going to be a babe. They're going to grow into a child. They're going to grow into a young adult. And they're going to grow into a parent where they begin to reproduce after their own kind. Like Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. And so now we who are spiritual, when they get caught up just because they got saved, doesn't mean they're not going to fall. Doesn't mean they're not going to scratch their knee. Doesn't mean that they're not going to need to be helped up. You know, help up. Let me, I fail. Uh, you don't fail. I thought you were saved. What you, you, I thought you were saved. What you doing falling? A babe and a child. Young adult. People fall. We all sin and come short of the glory of God. And so we all fall short. And so as we, as they grow, we're going to help them up and we're going to, we're going to show love and we're going to nurture them based upon where they are. And the Bible says, brethren, if a man is overtaken in a trespass, that means if a man is overtaken in a sin, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of gentleness. That's one of the fruits of the spirit, but you got to be spiritual in order to do that. Because if you're not spiritual, you're not walking in the spirit. Doesn't mean you're not saved, but you might not be walking in the spirit that day. So you who are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of gentleness. Considering yourself, lest ye also be tempted. And being mindful that we were once them. And some of us are still them. And that's why we can't help them because we're not helping ourselves. And so it says, being mindful. We go beat somebody down and, and keep hammering them and hammering them and talking down to them and, and ridiculing them. They're not going to want to hear nothing you have to say. All we're doing is closing their ears and in their eyes. They don't even want to see you coming. Because they know that you're going to beat them down. You're not going to love on them. You're not going to help pick them up right where they are and, and help them dust off their knees and stuff and get back up and, and encourage them in the word of God and be and let them know I'm praying for you. He said, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest she also be tempted because we can all still fall into something. And when we start judging and mistreating people, then God allow us to, to go through something so we can realize that that is, that's not a good feeling when you mistreat people. It's not a good feeling if somebody came to you and talked to you down like that. It's not a good feeling if you start to be all hounding somebody about something when you're not even showing godly love. You're not being gentle with that person. You just, just, just hitting them with stuff and hopefully not physically, but you just hitting them with all your mouth and you just saying all kind of negative things to them. They last thing they want to do. Sometimes you can push them back out into the world when you don't approach them right. And hopefully we're being prayerful as we speak to them. Like the little kids I saw today. I didn't say, boy, you better not hit that girl. I said, excuse me. Wait a minute. Why are you hitting kicking her? You can't do that. That's not nice. But I was trying to approach them in a nice way so it wouldn't come off to me in, a, in the wrong way. Because I watched it for a minute as I was at the stop sign. They're walking down the sidewalk. But still, we could get a bad response even when we go in the right spirit, right? Next step, it says, bear one another burdens and so to fulfill the law of Christ. We should bear one another's burdens. Somebody call you with some problem. They got stuff going on. We don't want to, oh, I don't want to hear. Oh, Lord, I can't believe they called me. Again. If God let them call you, you don't never know if it's a matter of life and death. You don't know what that person needs. You don't know what that person is going through. And if you are spiritual, we should be want to talk to that person, being prayerful like, Lord, if I'm not in a good spirit, I need to call them right back. Hey, can I call you right back or let me pray before I talk to them because I don't want to put my stuff on them. Asking God to give you the word, you and I the word to say to this person because we don't know what they're going through. It could be a matter of life and death. And so he said, bear one another's burdens and so to fulfill the law of Christ. Somebody buried our burdens. Somebody was there with us. We weren't always standing up. We have fallen down. We have been caught up in some stuff. Some of us newer than 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 uh oh good morning to one some of us more of us more recently than others but we should bear one another's burdens we should be able to pray for somebody hey let me pray for you you're going through something you're going through something let me pray for you you good I'm here. If you need me, I'm here. And honestly, and be genuine about that and just and, and mean that. Don't just say it. Mean it. Because we 
are all God's body. I need you. You need me. We're all a part of God's body. If you're hurting, I'm hurting. So we should bear one another's burdens so to fulfill the law of Christ. This is what the word of God says. Ye who are spiritual, restore such a one in love and gentle and spirit of gentleness and considering a lot of love. I think King James Version say in the spirit of love. It said, and, and being careful, remembering, you, unless ye may fall. And then now you caught up and you've been mean to somebody else. And the same thing you gave out, what you're going to get back. Because what a man sow it, he's going to reap it. That's the word of God. Verse number three, it says, for anyone thinks himself to do something when he is, think of himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Now, God is saying, you think you somebody, you're already deceiving yourself. We're all dirt from dirt, from we came from dirt and dirt. We're going to return to the earth. We some mocha dirt, some chocolate dirt and some vanilla dirt, whatever kind of dirt you are. You just got a little color to you, but we are all big old hunk of dirt. And we should be restoring one another in love, being mindful. You who are spiritual, being mindful, lest we fall into temptation, our own self. And we know that the enemy is always walking around lurking to, to trip us up, right? And so we're, we're not exempt just because you in church, just because you spend time with the Lord, and just because you a spiritual parent, just because you're growing in your faith, you are not exempt. From being tempted, you're not exempt from sin, you're not exempt from falling down, and so we need one another, and we want to show love and restore such a one in, in love. But let each one examine his own work, and then he will have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. So it means you're gonna look at your own self. Look at your own self to see where you are. Examine yourself to see if you even need to say anything. If you if you even have if you even have the right to say anything, are you able to talk to somebody and try to help correct somebody? Do you have your life together? Are you living in obedience? Are you walking in obedience? Are you living a life cuz nobody's perfect. We serve a perfect God. Or are you in a are you walking in obedience? Are you doing the things you need to do in your life? Is your nose clean? Do you have a speck in your own, a log in your own eye, a light pole in your own eye while you're trying to get a speck out of your brother's eye? Are you walking the, in the will of God? Are you walking in the spirit of God? Are you being obedient? Are you just walking around being a spiritual police? Are you walking around beating people up? Because they've fallen into sin. Or are you spiritual enough to restore such a one in gentleness and meekness and love? And sometimes people can sin and fall over and over again. And it can get frustrating, especially if you've been praying for them and you've been trying to talk to them and you want them, you want them to get better. Sometimes they can get frustrated. That's why you gotta be you and I have to be spiritual so we can go to God and pray for them and we can show love. We can continue to show love in a loveless situation. We can continue to show love in, in a dark place because God said in his word that we should be mindful. And so I'm going to leave you with one. I already kind of broke them down anyway. My first point is to walk in the spirit in order to correct or help someone who has been overtaken in a sin or a fault. We must first be spiritual ourselves in order to be gentle and show love. And compassion, we must be in the spirit of God. We must be connected with God. When we are spiritual and we are not operating in sin and we are in close proximity and relationship with God and we're walking by faith and not by sight. When we're living this life and we can share our testimony with other people, uh, someone that is not where we are. Someone that could be a, a babe in Christ. Someone could be a, a spiritual child. Someone that could be a, a young adult. When we have, when we, when we address them where they are and we're where we need to be, then we can do all of those things in love when we walk in the spirit. And when we look at, um, it says in the, um, in Ephesians 5, 18 and 21, it said, and do not be drunk with wine and which is dissipation, but be filled with the spirit. 
speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs in your heart to the Lord. When is the last time you and I spoke to someone in spiritual, in a spiritual way, in, in psalms and hymns? And that's what the word said. We should be speaking to one another in psalms and hymns. And then it says that uh, giving all thanks always for all things to God, the Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and submitting to one another in the fear of God. Do we even fear God anymore to even do that? And not fear like, oh, I'm so scared of God. We fear God because we reverence God. We, we, ha we don't mishandle him because we reverence who he is. And so that's what it's saying. I, we submit to one another in the reverence of God. Colossians 3 and 16 said, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns. Y'all, I'm sorry. I, I think I worked out. I did a lot of weights today and I'm sweating bad. Uh, I think it's trying to, my metabolism probably up, y'all. Um, admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Like, when have we been so happy? Good morning, Eric. We've been so happy and we're restoring someone in love and we're we're speaking to them in psalms. Like, you know, dwelling in and letting Christ dwell, the word of Christ dwell in us richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns. And spiritual song, singing with the grace in your hearts to the Lord. When I always say it, I admonish you. That means I'm begging you, I'm pleading with you to get it right and to get in line with God because I love you, each of you individually. I love you because I want you to have to be at your best self. I want you to live a life that you will be able to walk in God's blessings and not his curses. I want you to experience love from God. I want you to experience the blessings from the Lord. I don't want you to walk in a sin. I don't want you. And that's why I'll share some of my things with you. Testimony of my, my own life being transparent with you because I want you. I care about you and love you enough that I want you to be your best self. I want you to grow in Christ. I want you to be, I just want you to be everything that God wants you to be. I love you too, Eric. God bless you, beloved. I want you to be everything that God has for you to be. I don't. I would be a less, I'd be less than a person to want to have it all to myself and not want to see you or someone else grow. That's why I stay up late. That's why I study the word. That's why I pray, spend time with the Lord, because I want to see everybody grow. I want to see everybody Walk in their purpose. I want to see everybody glorifying God. I want to see the kingdom of God advance. I don't want to see somebody struggling spiritually, saying that they're one thing and doing another. I want us to walk in love. And when we when we mess up, we confess up. Ask God to forgive us. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Instead of walking around acting like we got it all together and we don't. Because we're all human. We all sin and come short of the glory of God. But the ways of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Yes, you're walking in love. And I'm genuine. I, a lot of you I, all, all don't know, but I genuinely love you. I just love you. They used to call me Karenese. Jacoba said she called me Karenese. I just always had a heart for God's people. And that's God. It ain't me. I'm not puffing myself up. It's something that God has given me. I've always cared about people. It doesn't matter who they are. I just care about them. I want them to be good. And sometimes at, the, at, at my own expense, I want them to be good. And so we should be restoring one another in love. God bless you, Antoinette. In love. Love is action. I say I love you, but I'm not, I'm not doing nothing. I love you. So I'm going to do something. I'm going to give you something. And I, I don't save nobody. It's God. Some plant, some water. But ultimately, it's God who gets the increase for the kingdom advancing. We are all evangelists. We're all evangelists. If we're a believer, we are evangelists for the kingdom of God. We are ambassadors for Christ. And we should be mimicking what God says. We should be talking about the kingdom of God. God bless you, the one. We should be walking in the spirit. And our second one. We should remain humble lest we fall into temptation. 
He said, being careful, considering yourself, lest ye also be tempted. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. I mean, it's his law. This is what he told us to do. For if anyone thinks of himself to be something, if anyone thinks of himself to be something, if anyone thinks of himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. That's the word of God. He said, if anyone thinks of himself to be something when he is nothing, that's what God said. And Paul was talking to the church of Galatia. If anyone thinks of himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. We are all a big old hunk of dirt. Mocha, vanilla, chocolate, whatever color you A hunk of dirt. From, dirt, from the earth we came and the earth we're going to go. We're going to return back to the earth. We should be restoring one another in love. We should want everybody to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. When we see man down, man down, we should not leave our brethren in a fire. That movie said fireproof. It was talking about a marriage. You should never leave your partner in a fire. We should never want to leave our brother or sister in a fire. We should want to see them. Be good. We should want to see them come up. We should be restoring one another in love when we see somebody has been overtaken in a sin and a fault. Oh yeah, that they, honey, they done got caught up. Honey, I heard that they was doing it. They that is not what God says, and we all have been guilty of that. But today we can start and not let that be us be a part of that conversation. I love you. I need you. I need you to survive. I won't, I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to survive. It is his will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to survive. We love each other. Yes, Eric, love covers a multitude of sin. If you read, what was it? Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7 talks about love. We got to love one another. We have to love one another. Love covers a multitude of sin. We should remain humble. We must always remember that we too are human and that we are housed in this thing called flesh. And we talked about it yesterday. In this flesh dwells no good thing. And we are all susceptible to sin. We are not exempt, no matter how spiritual, how mature that we may be. And God wants us to always show love. There is never a time where we should want to be ugly or be mean to someone just because they found themselves falling. Just because they found themselves in sin. Will we get frustrated if they continue in it? Yes, that can get frustrating. But always be mindful. Be mindful that we can fall ourselves. We can get caught up ourselves. Are we excusing the fault? No, we're not the fault sin police. But we can show love because love will restore a person. Restoring in love. Love will restore somebody. Somebody can be broken. What is that? No, they don't love me, but I know a lot of people that do. My church family love me. They love me. Sometimes that's all the person needs to hear to know somebody loves them because the enemy going to tell them that they can't get right. You done fell again. You might well go on and give it up. You might well go on and kill yourself. You, ought to, you might well go on and just walk on out and leave the church. Go on on about your business because you just can't get it right. You just living a lie. But somebody... Go and tell that person, I love you. I've been where you are. Been there, done that. You're going to be all right. You're going to make it through it. I love you. Let me hug you. Let me pray for you. And follow up and I'm going to check on you. And somebody, you know, enemy is hitting them with all type of blows. But guess what? God will send one of his children, his believers to restore in love and pick that person up. And they'll be like, you know what? I am 
from somebody. I don't have to sit and stay like this. I can get up and face tomorrow. I can live again. I'm not as bad as I thought I was. The devil told me I was nothing. The devil told me I wasn't going to make it. The devil told me to throw in the towel. And somebody came in the love of God, in the love of Christ, and told me that I was somebody. That Jesus loves me. And that I have the opportunity to put one foot in front of the other. And I can work on some things. I can ask God to help me. And so imagine how a person would feel if the enemy and everybody else tell them the negative thing and somebody coming with the love of Christ. That's going to be the hope that they need. That's going to be the hope that they need to get up and face another day and to try to do something different with the help of the Lord. Restoring in love. Always show love. Walk in the spirit. And being mindful. Staying humble. Lest ye fall. Being mindful because we all can fall. We might find ourselves falling from grace, the grace of God, so we can see how it feels because we've judged somebody. We mistreated somebody in their vulnerability, in their weakness. You want that on your hands? You, the person already beat up and then you come along and you just jab them. They already on the cliff and you come along and like the boy did, just kick them on off. Just kick them on off the curb, off the curb, kick them on off the cliff. It could be a matter of life and death. And he says, if anyone thinks he or she is more than they ought, <laughs> they run the risk of being humble themselves. Because he said we should not be, if anyone thinks themselves to be something when we're nothing. Big old hunk of dirt. Big old hunk of dirt. Living on God's grace and God's mercy. And most of the things that we judging people for, we already done done them ourselves. And if we ain't done that, we've done something else. And so God is wanting us to, ye who are spiritual, restore such a one in gentleness, gentleness and, and compassion and considering yourself, lest ye fall. Got a whole light pole in our eye, but because you don't think nobody know about it, we can go out and dress up, clean up and tell everybody and talk about everybody. That is not what God wants to do. Mm. He wants us to care for those who have been falling in a sin. He wants us to take care of the babes in Christ. He wants to take care of those who are young adult, a young child, children in Christ. He wants us to take care of those who are young adults to help them get strong enough so they can become a parent. And so they can we can reproduce out their own kind. So they can start bringing people to church. They can start inviting people. They can start doing those things. Because when they're at a young adult stage, that's what they should be doing anyway. And so if you, if you got to know, know a person before you start talking to them anyway, you should know where they are in their spiritual walk. Know if they're a babe. You don't go deal with a babe the same way you would deal with a child. You don't go deal with a babe the same way you would deal with a spiritual uh, young adult. You're not going to go deal with a, a child the way you're going to deal with a babe and vice versa. You're going to deal with them according to where they are and you deal with them according to knowledge. And if you don't know them, you might want to step away for a little while or come and pray and then come back and try to form a relationship, form a relationship with them. Get to know them before you start to say something, because if you don't know them, then you just talking and they don't even respect what you say. Anyway, you got to form a relationship because when people know that you care, it makes a difference. Yes, change our broken heart because most people that are broken hearted the one hurt people do hurt they do hurt people and sometimes people be out of fear of their own selves and their own pain will lash out on other people because something we struggle with like i struggle with uh weight i go up and down but i sure can put somebody on the diet i know what to do i can keep them straight and i need to keep my own self straight and so i know what to do i just sometimes i get caught up and get lax and don't do what I'm supposed to do. But I can tell them what to do. I know what to do. I've done it too many times. And now I'm on the journey again. But it's like, God will show you, like, you've been doing this too many times. But when I start with somebody working out, they're like, I'm going to go to gym with you. It don't work for me like that. I have to go by myself. Me and the Lord. Because it's a spiritual thing with me. Me and the Lord have to go and talk about it. We got to get us some scriptures. And then we, me and the Lord have to go work out. 
by ourselves. We had to go to the gym, go to the trail, whatever I got to do. Me and the Lord got to start out by ourselves. Now somebody can come and, and come with me. They want to come now, they can come, they welcome. But it got to be me and God first because if they decide they're not going to come, they decide that they ain't going to make it today, I got to call you, keep waking you up and all that, that's going to distract me. And so I always start out by myself. And then I welcome somebody else when I get my strength enough to where I know I'm good. I welcome somebody else to come in and join me. And that's what I do. Me and the Lord, you work out the Lord. That's what we do. And that's why I can be consistent because that's our time together as we talking and I'm by myself. And that's how we focus. And then the weight start coming off. But he's letting me know is is this something you keep going back to. It's still a sin. Overtaking a sin. You still eating too much. You still and I just eat junk. I don't really eat a lot of food. It's just junk. They say, you are what you eat. I hope I'm not junk, Jesus. But that's all it is. And so we all struggle with something. And I can tell them what to do. You need to do this, this, this. And why are you eating that? I can do that. And that's how we are. Ye who are spiritual, restore such a one in, in gentleness and compassion. And I use me, for example, and weight because that's something. And people who know me, that I go up and down, up and down, up and down. And the pandemic did not help me. I was, I guess I was just eating and chilling, watching TV. But I got all size clothes. I can do it all. But guess what? I know what to do. I know my shortcomings. And sometimes people are like, girl, how many times you going to do that? That don't make me feel better when they say that. But guess what? I guess I'm going to keep doing it because obviously that's what I do. But that's why I start with God because God does not beat us up like God. Like God don't beat us up like man does. Yes, the one. Now you can roll with me now. We can roll uh, virtual. But I'm telling you, God does not beat us up like man beat us up. You see, I already fat. Now, why are you going to be talking about me? I already feel bad about myself. I already feel bad about myself. Why are you going to beat me up? And so that is not going to help me lose weight. I already feel bad about myself. That's not going to help me get out of sin. If I already feel bad about myself, you going and beating somebody else up. Do not help them get better. And sometimes it'll make them go and eat more. Depends on where they are. It'll make them go and sin more because at least that person that they're sinning with or whatever they're doing accepts them because food is a comfort depends on because I'm an emotional eater. And so I'm just I'm just using this as a um, a platform, I'm using this as an uh, example so people would know and I'm using myself because overtaking in a sin of overeating, overtaking in a sin of not working out and doing the things, but there's a lot of stuff that took place in my life. But people will come and say, How many times you gonna do that? I don't it ain't affecting them. But guess what? It is what it is. It's it's the it's what I struggled with, struggles with, and this is what I go through. And you have to do not one exercise. I'm the one gotta get on there and do all that stuff and like I cannot believe using a size 10 before the before the pandemic. Hey, mama. Hey, mom. Uh, in a size 10 photo for, before the pandemic. And you just like, let yourself do this. But guess what? Beating somebody up does not fix the problem. Like Eric said, it is what it is. It does not fix the problem. We should bear one another's burdens. And then we go to go to verse number five. It says, but it says we should examine. Let us one examine his own work and then he will have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another examine our own self because you know if you have six months worried about your own business and then you take six months leaving everybody else's alone good morning janet good morning beloved. you take six months leaving everybody else's alone boy what kind of world we live in because and all I'm doing, and I'm not saying, I'm just using me as an example so you all will understand. And I'm just telling you how it makes me feel when somebody repeatedly say the same thing to me. When I already know it is what it is. Yeah, I ain't got fit. It is what it is. It don't make me a less of a person. It don't make me a bad person. It just is what it is. And that's my thing that I've been overtaking in. That's my flaw. That's my thing that I emotional eater because I went through a lot of stuff and guess what I'm just thankful to be here because so much stuff go on so we don't want to beat people up when they fall into sin 
When they fall, they know they in sin. They know they out there for the case. They know they then got went to jail again when they just got out on bond. They know what they doing. But some people have issues. And we beating them up. They ain't going to make the situation better. Restore such a one in gentleness and considering yourself, lest ye also be tempted. Eating might not be your thing, but you got a thing. And you don't want your thing to be out, but some, that's one thing. If, I can't hide that. If I eat too much, it's going to show. And so you just you just get back with God and you're like, God, here I go again. And you, he don't say, I can't believe this you again. Go sit in the back of the line. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. He doesn't do that. He doesn't beat me up. He just say, come on. Let's let's find out what it is, what you know, so we can get some get we can fix this thing so you don't keep going through it. But thank God that he doesn't beat me up because the thing is, I gotta lose it. I gotta be able to get myself together. So God doesn't do us, he doesn't treat us like man does. And so we gotta stop that. We gotta show love. Cause I haven't seen beating somebody up that never knocked off a pound. It is not. Beating somebody else up until uh, I'm they ain't never stopping from smoking. Beat them up ain't never going to stop them from drinking. Now, Janet say they need mind their own business, stay in their lane. Yeah, and restore gently, but that it don't always come that way. And you already feel bad because you done went there. You can look at your pictures in every size. I got every size in my closet. I already know. I already know where I am. And I already feel bad about it. But it doesn't stop me from moving forward. It doesn't stop you from living life. It doesn't stop you from being a good person. It doesn't stop you from ministering to people. It doesn't stop you because eventually if I would have listened to a lot of stuff like that, I could have because I was kind of ashamed to come online first <laughs> when it all first got started. When I was, when I first came out, I was like, oh, Lord, these people going to say, well, she fat again. But I had to get past that. So people deal with other things and we beating them up. And I just keep putting myself out here. I done covered myself up bad out here in these streets. But I keep putting myself out because I want you all to know that people got to be real. We have to realize where people are. And beating them up does not change the situation. And and it's, it's not a deal breaker. They are still God's children. They are still loved by God. And God will use us to come along and restore such a one. Restore such a one in love. Beating them up, don't do them or make them go in the cross, go in the closet or go in the dark and eat up some more stuff or it's going to make them go somewhere and, and, and sleep with somebody again because that person at least make them feel better than what they was feeling. Make them go smoke some more, make them go do some more drugs or make them go drink and get drunk because they want to, that's how the pain, they don't want to feel the pain. Whatever it is, it's something that they trying to mask. And so God is working on all of us. And so we have to bear one another's burdens and we must restore such a one in love and being mindful lest we fall. So I'm going to leave that alone. I pray that today that um, I said something that will help you. And even if you're one of those people that beat other people up, because we've all done it. We've just done it in, in different ways. And so we all just need to confess because when I started talking about me, it made me feel how it made me feel when people said to me, I feel I realized I've made other people feel bad at things that I've said to them. And if you don't want somebody else to feel the way you feel, then you shouldn't do that to anybody else. Do unto others as you had them to do unto you. If you know it's not going to build them up, then we shouldn't say it. And so that's all we can all learn from this Galatians chapter 6, verse 1 through 5. If brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, any sin, ye who are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest ye be tempted. And you find yourself that not doing that, then you need, we need to be quiet and ask God to help us not to say, is it a big deal? Do we need to really say something? Is it? Do we need to say something? That's the first question. Is God leading me to say something? When I'm saying something, is it going to build this person up or is it going to tear this person down? How is this person going to feel when I finish saying what I'm saying? Am I, am I restoring this person? Am I spiritual in this? Am I restoring this person in gentleness and considering lest I fall? Because remember, we all got something we're dealing with. Bear one another's burdens 
so to fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks himself to be something, if anyone thinks of himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. <laughs> Paul said, if anyone think they something, when they all when they know they, they nothing, they already we already deceive ourselves when we think we all of that and we start putting people down. We are nobody trying to tell somebody about somebody, which is Jesus Christ, who can save anybody. But let each one examine his own work. And then he have the he he will have rejoicing in himself alone and not another. So you can rejoice in what God is doing for you. You God, thank you, Lord, that you got me moving. Lord, thank you, Lord, that you got me in the gym. Lord, thank you, Lord, that you got me with the right mindset, Lord. Oh, Lord, thank you, Lord, because now somebody can come roll with me. But Lord, thank you that you got me consistent. Lord, thank you that you done changed my mindset about what I eat. Lord, thank you that I'm back on track. Yeah, that I messed up so many, so many times. But Lord, thank you for this time, God. And so we just got to, so you can rejoice in, in yourself alone. And not in somebody else. For each one should bear their own load. Everybody got to bear their own load. You can talk to somebody till they blue in the face. But they got to go by themselves. When you're not around. They got to go. And not go to the liquor store. If they don't want to drink no more. You can talk to them. Until they blue in the face. But they got to go. When they go on their own. They got to make a decision. If they're going to go back out into the world. They got to make a decision. If they're going to change some numbers in their phone. Block some numbers in their phone. If they're not healthy and strong enough, they're going to have to make a decision. We help. We bear their burdens. We pray. We talk. We encourage. But they're going to have to carry their own load. You can't be with somebody every day. Every day I have to make a decision. If I'm going to do right or do wrong. If I'm going to eat this or not eat this. Or I'm going to work out a little hard. Whatever. But it's not a deal breaker. It's not a deal breaker. You still wake up and get to live another day. You still smile at just one part of their lives, one part of our lives that we struggle, that we struggle in, that we stumble in, overtaking and sin. And when people beat you up, it don't make it better. But they must, we must carry our own load. We can't carry it for them. They have to make their own decisions. And sometimes you just hate to let them go. You don't want to see somebody by themselves. You don't want to see them hurt. You don't want us. You want I just call you want to, but that's when you're trying to do God's job. You got to let everybody see God for themselves and let God talk to them. After you done buried their burdens, after you done talked to them and prayed over and encouraged them, and you love them, tell them you love them, and you've been gentle with them, you pray for them that God will give them the strength to do whatever it is they need to do and to overcome whatever they've been overtaken in and whatever sin they've been overtaken in. And guess what? They got to carry their own load every day. Every day they got to get up and carry their own load. Yes, and Jesus is the answer. You got to start with Jesus, and that's what I do. I start with Jesus every time. And he's and, and it's just another way for me to spend more time with him. So I'm thankful. I'm thankful. And so I pray that I said something today. I pray that you're restoring such a one in love. And uh, if you don't know Jesus Christ today in the party of your sin, today is a great day to do so. All you got to do is be willing to admit that you are a sinner. Be willing to turn from your sins. Confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that he died on the cross for your sins and that God raised it from the grave on the third day with all power and authority in his hands. It's a gift of God by grace through faith lest anyone should boast. Nobody has a right to boast because we said think you something when you're nothing. And if we would not be saved, it had not been for Jesus, had not been for God and his love for us, sending his own son to pay a sin debt that we over couldn't pay and a perpetuation for our sins, his great love. And so Jesus and his and humbled himself all the way to the cross. Nobody can boast about nothing. I can't believe they doing that. I can't believe we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Restore such a one in love. Get a relationship with them. Get into their space to know who they are and find out what's ailing them. What's going on with them that causes them to do what they're doing. A spiritual child. Find out where they are in their, in their walk with Christ. They're a spiritual child. You're going to deal with them as a spiritual child. They're, if they're a babe, you're going to deal with them like a babe. 
You might have to do a little more extra cuddling with them. You might have to burp them. You, you can't just leave them to themselves. You might have to do extra things with somebody from with a babe and a spiritual child. Yeah, you're going to have to guide them because they're running out in front of the car. You have to try to keep them. Hey, come on. No, we don't want to do that. No, we don't cuss them by out. That ain't right. You know, we're going to have to try to teach them how to walk. They don't know how to walk. They just started walking, so they they stumbling. They are taller. They just stumbling. Oh, they just started walking, and so they stumbling over things. They they staggering when they walk. We gotta treat them accordingly. It's young adult, treat them accordingly. If you're a spiritual parent, accordingly. Should be reproducing after your own kind. You should be souls. Souls should be saved for your life. People shouldn't be just keep encountering you and nobody's being saved. You should be encountering. People should be encountering you and they should be growing in their they faith. They should be growing and they should be accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Amen. Heavenly Father, I followed your assignment. Father God, you're such an amazing God. Thank you for always restoring me in love. Thank you for always restoring your children, your this world, people in love. You don't treat us like man do, but you're trying to show man. You're trying to show us how to deal with your people. You're trying to say those who are spiritual, restore such a one in love. And if you're not spiritual, then you shouldn't be saying anything because you know it ain't going to come out right. All you're going to do is hurt another person. I pray that we will seek your face, oh God, before we go and, and hurt somebody. We have to be mindful and forgive me when I've done that. Please forgive me when I've done that, God. And, and if I've added to somebody's pain rather than lift them up, God, have your way today, God, in all of us. There's somebody in our path that we haven't restored in a gentle way that we might owe an apology to. And that we, that we can get, help us to get it together, God. Help us to restore in love. Being mindful lest we fall. Help us to get that speck out of our eye before we, that log out of our eye before we try to get that speck out of somebody else's eye. Help us to remind, remind ourselves that we're, not think of, think of ourselves as, as more than we ought to when we're nothing. And only by your grace and your mercy that we have not been consumed. Now, Father God, have your way today. Stir our hearts today. Those who want to know you. Those who already know you. Help us to grow in you. Those who know you and walked away. Help you married to the backslider. Help them to come back and be restored. And let them know you're going to restore them in love. In love, you're going to take them back and welcome them back home. And those who don't know you. Let them know that, oh, what great love you have, that you've been waiting on them and you've been chasing them down for such a time today. Help them to accept you as their Lord and Savior today, Lord God. This will be the best decision. They'll make many decisions in their life, but this will be the best decision they will ever make to trust you with their heart and make you their Savior. Be glorified, God. Edify your body of people and help us to remember that we need one another to survive. And we won't continue to harm each other with our mouth, with words from our mouth. We're going to build up. We're not going to tear down. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Hey, Sharon. Hey, beloved. I pray that you all would uh, know that uh, God, I love you all so much. I love you all so much. And I, I'm i transparent a lot of times and because I want you all to know that I'm human just like you are. I'm human. And I might have something. My life might could help you some way. Because sometimes if I'm not, I'm not scared to say it, somebody else might be hurting in the same area or in another area. But I pray that you would get up and know that God loves you. And if you have the opportunity to restore someone, make sure you're spiritual about it and you're praying about it and you restore such a one in love. You don't want to be the one to, to kick somebody over the cliff. They already beat themselves up. They already know where they've fallen short. And you don't want to be the one to just push them over. The world loves its own. And the church got to start loving the body. The church got to start working and loving and being in, in just being intentional about loving the body, loving one another. Nobody should ever come to the body of Christ. Nobody should ever come to the house of God or somebody extended from the body of Christ and leave there feeling worse than they came. That should never be so. And we've all been guilty of hurting somebody or saying the wrong things. So I pray today we will take the, take it up on ourselves and we will fulfill the law of Christ. And we won't ever be a part of a hand that's going to hurt somebody. We're going to be a hand. If I can't lift you up, I'm not going to tear you down. I'll just keep my mouth shut. 
And I can just pray for you because I ain't in the right spirit to build you up. I'm not going to tear you down. And even if it's something about you and I, I'm going to need to walk away and go pray because I don't want to tear you down. Because you already know where you are. And me beating you down don't make it worse. and not going to help our relationship. And so I pray that we will all just ask God for forgiveness and will we play the part in that. And that we will begin to move forward and fulfill the law of Christ. Restore such a one in gentleness and love. We're all changing. Day and day we're changing. We're becoming who we already are. We've been good. We've been a royal priesthood. We've been a holy nation. We've been set apart. We've been the apple of God's eye. But through sin and life, we forgot. So now we're becoming who we already are. So we've been these people. So let's go ahead and walk in. Amen. I love you, beloved. And God loves you way, 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 way more than anyone could ever love you in this world. Have a wonderful day. Bye.